Hello guys and girls and welcome to our first look at Two Point Hospital with me Biffa. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're new to my channel we are going to have daily Two Point Hospital videos over the next week. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, don't miss out. We are going to be covering as much as possible and there's so much to cover. The game was so much fun. I was uh, privileged to be asked down to the offices in uh, London, the Sega European uh, headquarters in London where Two Point Studios are, to be able to play the game. And I played it from when I turned up until they kicked me, they literally kicked me out of the office um, because I was meeting the next group coming in, met some other YouTubers. I'm like, can you leave? Can you go? And I was like, no, I want to play some more. I want to meet people. It was so much fun. So. What you're seeing in the background at the minute is a bit of B-roll footage they've given me, some of the stuff from the game. We'll get to my footage in a moment. But there was so much that I learned about the game, about what you can do. I tell you what, it's not just a redo of the old theme hospital. Oh no, sorry, Bob. It is, it is great. It builds on the fun and all the good things of the last game. It takes out all the boring things of the last game. That you, you know, do you remember you'd be sat there, theme hospital? game on fast forward fast as you can waiting for money to come in waiting for stuff to happen no nope, none of that building rooms a little bit awkward in the old game great fun in the new game as you'll see as you'll see so we're gonna dive into some footage and i'll take you through that and as as we go along anything that sort of comes to mind that we were speaking about on the day as well i'll try and fill you in but yeah every day at this time there's going to be more two-point hospital stuff so subscribe don't miss out and let us dive into our city so we uh, our city i'm thinking of <laughs> playing city skylines so this is the map uh, you start off two point county and you can see all the different h's around the place all the different hospitals fluttering there's one there uh what's it we've got a couple down here and um, you can get three stars in these um but you don't have to stick to one hospital you can jump back and forth between different hospitals you can build up one to a certain level those lower bullocks you can go and get some stars on another one unlock some new things go back to an old hospital fill in your career goal this is like a separate little thing that you can build on i'll let you read all of those as you go through the game you don't have to do these but obviously you're unlocking these as you go anyway you know you get three stars in tumble you, you're going to do it and it's going to unlock and you're going to earn money and you'll get a little goal so this is this is like an overall if you really want to complete the entire game organization value of 10 million wow that'd be that'd be tough but there's lots and lots of things to aim for in there. But that is not the main aim of the game. There we go. There's some like leaderboard. Someone's been playing it a lot before we got to touch the game. We're going to start in Hogsport. We're going to begin our career in Hogsport by establishing our first hospital. And here we go. This is where we're going to dive into our first hospital. Two Point Hospital. Welcome to Two Point County. Are you ready to start building your first hospital and curing some patients? So I just skip over the moving the camera stuff. But look at the graphics. Look at the graphics. Absolutely fantastic. So we're going to start off by building a reception. Now there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. We're going to sort of cover these in the videos as we go along. But the, the way it leads you into the game, this little tutorial, and then it just lets you carry on, it is great. I like that. It's not a tutorial and then breaks on, start again in the new hospital. It just lets you build and continue. So... This list on the left you'll see where it says what I'm looking up and down now. These are all items you can unlock as the game progresses with your Qdosh, I think it is, the K number at the side there. Um, and there's a point in, I think, the second episode or the third one where I suddenly go, oh, I've got all this Qdosh that I've been building up so I can unlock all of these new things which make the hospital more individualized. So, yeah, we'll get to that a bit later. So we're going to hire an assistant. And they've all got a star rating. They've all got different things that they're good at. You see the little papers with the with the gold stars on? I don't look at those just now, but we'll, we'll check that in a bit. But obviously, the better they are, the more they cost. So that's the same from the old game. Excellent names as well. Dahlia Thwokhammer. We didn't go for her, but there we go. We have our first... Uh, receptionist and now we need a GP's office so they can come in they can get looks after now room building oh my goodness me so much better than the old game as you will see we'll get a list of rooms at the minute we've only got one available to us and it's just fantastic as the game goes on and gets harder you'll see in later episodes you want to get to the point where you can easily move rooms edit rooms change rooms and it is so so easy as you're building you see it automatically gives you a door it gives you the basics and you go, yep the room is done 
and you can get a doctor and just get going but later on when you suddenly realize you haven't got enough space or i could really do with a corridor between those two rooms it is so easy to move things around we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a bit later so here we see me looking at the doctor's different skills that they've got so the more skills the more they cost the more multitasking they can be but sometimes you want to limit them just to one thing pay less for a doctor and limit them just to gps you can do that um or you can have a doctor that covers gp and diagnosis and other stuff psychiatry you can do what you like but this is oh listen to the radio Welcome back to your favorite radio station with the vastly overqualified sir nigel bickleworth I'm here to inform, to entertain, and to bring some small measure of sophistication to your drab little lives. I love Nigel. Should any of you have any requests for popular tunes, as I believe people like to call them, do not hesitate to repress that impulse. I have no intention of playing any of that drivel. <laughs> I love it. You've got to listen. You probably won't hear it as much as I'll be talking, but here's our first patient. The stuff that goes on in the background, the announcements over the tannoy, the radio, is, pr is pretty hilarious. It really adds to the old whole comedy feel of the game, which is great. So our first patient is here into the GP's office. We're going to take a close look at what's going on here. Have a little chat, tap on the computer. There we go, he's diagnosed, he's happy, and now he needs to go to the pharmacy. So again, it's moving us along slowly. There we go, pharmacy required. So we get these little pop-ups in the bottom right corner, you saw me click it on there, our inbox. Of stuff that we need to do. And I, I play at the beginning, when I first started playing this, on, you can see the speeds. Bottom right corner, you've got pause, play, and double speed. I keep it on normal speed for most of the game, just to see how it goes, and whether... You're constantly kept busy with stuff to do, whether you're waiting or, you know, there's too much. And at first, it's like, yeah, there's plenty to do, keeps you busy. Soon, I mean, you're probably talking when we get to bigger hospitals a bit later on, it really gets manic. There's so much going on, which is fantastic. You can see me doing the room building again. A few more things have unlocked. Um, and that's what you want. You, you can, with this game, you can micromanage the patients, the doctors and things as much as you want. Or you can just like build your rooms and let it go. So, you know, we do a bit of both of that. Later on, I run a game and I deliberately build and build and build and build and build as fast as I can to see whether I can go bankrupt and cause problems and then how I get out of it and all that sort of stuff. We'll get to that later. So, yeah, stuff you recognise, benches, you want places for people to wait. You'll notice, I think we, uh, there we go, let's have that one over there. Easy to move items as well. You can click on them and just move them, although somebody sat on that, so I left it. I could have just clicked and moved it but there we go you'll notice over the top of their head sometimes they have a number that is the queue position that they're in and you can the screen on the side there you've got lots of information about what they've got what they think they've got their queue position how happy they are yeah queue first patient there we go so we get some reputation for that our reputation's going up we're already level two if you look in the bottom right there we go, excellent. And we've got a little pop-up there as well, which I don't click on. Oh, there we go, hospital reputation. I do click on it. Post-commentary, always fun. I can't remember what, exactly what I did like three, four weeks ago. <laughs> can't remember what I did yesterday. So our patients are coming in. This is the pharmacy. Nurse Alfred Moose. There we go. The details in the machines as well. I try and show as much of what's going on because they just look fantastic. They're... The way they move and act, the way they cure some funny diseases that we're going to get later on as well is going to be great. But as you can see, there is so much in the game. So look at the top right. We've got a couple of little tasks that we want to do, which we're working on. So a couple of fire extinguishers, Holistic get a janitor. Again, the janitors have different skills. So he's a mechanic. We just need a mechanic at the moment. So I think I end up going for the most expensive one. Because <laughs> it covers all sorts. We did ghost busting as well. If people start dying later on with his dust buster, that's quite funny. But yeah, we go for the cheapest one. Yep, there we go. Chuck him down. He can maintain the machines. They'll empty the bins. You know, all that sort of stuff. There we go. We get a little bit of information about him. He's looking for work. So he's a bit bored at the moment. But the micromanaging of your staff levels and things like that, you can really, if you want to, dive into that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And things will still run well. Um, I think that's why they've done so well on this game, is that, you know, you can choose how to play. Now, Walter's going for a walk. He's on a break. It says there for 12 days. I think I'm reading that right. So, it's like, he's on a break. 
There's no staff room to go for. He's having a holiday in the hospital, so we obviously need someone else at reception. And you see the little symbol above reception saying, there's nobody working there. But I'm like, yeah, he'll come back soon anyway. So it's April the 11th. I'll, I'll keep an eye on that, see when he comes back. So we're going to build, there we go, keep people happy. So we're going to build like a little reception waiting area, get some food and drink down. And this is one of the things that as you go along, decor plays, plays a big part in keeping people happy. Um, and you, you know, you can get to a certain point in your hospital where you're like, oh, I really need another waiting area. I really need some more decor. I've now got to remove or edit and move around all of my rooms. And like I said, it, oh, there we go, you see the little decor green glow that popped up. And it is such fun to do it. Pause the game and rearrange everything. And we'll get to that a bit later on in the game. But there we go, leaflet stand, keep people happy. Get that one going as well. Place that down somewhere. There we go. I wonder where I'm going to put that thing. In here somewhere, trying to find some space for it. Right there where they can reach it. In the way of what is probably going to be a corridor or <laughs> another room. So people are... Oh yeah, we clicked on these things up here. We've got online challenges. I'm going to try and... When I get the game, myself and uh, another YouTuber, we'll keep it under wraps at the moment, we're going to try and do a multiplayer challenge. Now what you can do is basically you can play together at the same time or you can play at separate times and the game will keep track of your score for your hospitals as you're playing through um, and it will count it as like a multiplayer game so we're going to do some multiplayer challenges at some point in the future couldn't do that during the day but yeah got some of that stuff lined up so that'll be good so we're earning money people are being cured we've got a new illness called clamp uh, what's that once this grips a patient doesn't let go so we need to do something about that and we need a staff room, so I think we're going to work on that now at the back here, next to the pharmacy. So most of the time I'm sort of sticking rooms like against the wall and you know using like that little corner and things like that. But as, as you progress, you start thinking, I've got this little weird nook of a space, what can I do with it? And I think in probably towards the end of the series, the end of the week, I start having fun with the rooms. Because you've got the minimum size most rooms are. I think most of them are three. Um, but then you start realising, like the staff room, you've got like 30 staff and only three places for them to sit. So you need more staff rooms, bigger staff rooms. Once you've got your minimum size of room, like 3x3, three three, you can then add on those little blue squares that each room is made of, the sort of blueprint squares. You can add those on to the side, just click them on. So we'll have like a, a cross come out the side here or build a triangle of the squares over here. You can just do whatever you like. Um, and fill up the spaces in an interesting shape. So, there we go. Staff room, want to start, you really want to keep your staff happy, I tell you, because they will get hungry and thirsty, they will complain, they will not do their jobs. And you can see how happy they are, see whether they need a rest as well. Uh, drink some snacks, yeah. Uh, on the thing to the side there, the little menu to the side, under the mood tab. And there's a few options down the bottom there. I'll hover over them at some point. But you can send them home, fire them. You can increase their wage. You can give them another contract. You can do all sorts of things again. And that's something to keep an eye on. Because Oh, there we go. Look, you could do that and just add on to a room if you wanted to. Although I'm building... What am I building here? Oh, toilets. There we go. Um, yeah, sometimes people just leave. They get unhappy and they just go. And if you haven't noticed it, then... We now yeah. bring you this oh, Nigel's back. Sir Nigel Reviews. Today I take a look at the new fine dining establishment, Les Souffles Tristes. <laughs> and what a delight for the experienced palate this is. The scrambled emu eggs on pickled toast are particularly good. I give it four salt shakers. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you, Nigel. I do appreciate that. You've probably been hearing the uh, Tannoy announcements as well in the background. Like, if there's a staff shortage, please speak to a member of staff. It's like a real sort of... Yes, there we go. So I've got some things I didn't want to put in. There we go. So we've got our first bathroom. Announcement. Bins will get full. So here's the toilet cube because they need to be maintained as well. And you can you can adjust the toilets, make them male and female. You can just put like a multi-sex toilet down here with the cubicles, which we do. There we go. Cleaners cleaning up. Oh, we're editing the room, so I'm adding some more things in here. Let's add a bin in. So just a couple of clicks, and you can totally change a room. I've got to click on the green tick at the top. Hospital levels going up. Queues get longer, and we'll see that. We're going to 
see Q warnings above above rooms. We'll see Q numbers above people's heads. You can push people up the queue if they come in. Like you know, you get like the um, emergency guys that will come in. Your helicopter will land, and you'll get clown fever, or chest infection, which we'll see in a few episodes time. Um, and you want to bump them up the queue so they get uh, seen to first. You can do that if you want to. So again, lots of details, stuff you can dive into. Diagnosis, here we go. So we've got the GP's office. Once they've been to the GP's office, sometimes they need to be diagnosed a bit further. So we're going to add in a diag... Uh, let's cancel that and do it again. Yeah. By at this time, I hadn't quite worked out the nuances of the room. If you stop and make it too small, want to add some more and stuff like that. So... Uh, there we go. We're going to put this one together. So, diagnosis office, you can have an examination table. I like the way with this as well. You don't, do you remember you used to have to go down a list and click, oh, I want a door, I want a table, I want a... This will give you the minimum that you need. So, a door, a table, and a diagnosis machine. Then you can just finish. And then if you want to add other stuff, you can do. And there's lots of decoration items. You can go back and add some more if you want later. Making lots of money. See, we've got the dollars. Bottom right, $211,000. And we've got the kudosh as well. We've got 50 k So the, that is for unlocking the decoration items. That's like a separate thing. Um, which I don't unlock anything for a while because I, I, you know, I didn't quite get how that worked. I probably skipped over reading it somewhere. So excited to dive into the game. Amber Bolognese. Oh, newsflash. Lightheadedness. Aha. I'm sure you've seen this one before. So we have lightheadedness. And we need to deal with that, and we need to diagnose it, and doctor cannot work in... Oh, have I hired a doctor for general diagnosis by mistake? Did that say doctors can't work there? I think I missed that. We have a spare doctor. There's also lists of patients, lists of doctors, uh, which are the things in the bottom left, those little blue cards, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in a future episode. Oh, see the queue numbers above their head. They're waiting at the pharmacy so if you have people that do do you remember i was saying about hiring staff and some of them have abilities if they like for instance a nurse will work faster at uh, giving out the medicine there we go look you can see the symbol on the right above the bed <laughs> we don't have a nurse in there so things like that really do help so it will lower the queue times and stuff there we go we've got our first lightheadedness person fig blanket has i'm trying to work out why dr amber bolognese isn't working trip. in there as to what you yep. reported Doctor on, cannot work I in general. Come on, Biffa, get me with the program. Anything. Aha, there we go. So, here we go. This is it. The lists. These really, really handy. Again, later on. Once you get... I'll let you read that. You can pause it if you want. Once you get into having 50 patients wandering around your hospital with diseases and illnesses, queue, wait times, rooms you haven't built yet, it really, really gets manic in a fun way. And you can look and see... So I can see Mia, this doctor here, very tired, needs to take a break. So I'm going to pick him up. Come on over here, have a break. Don't wait. Have a 13-day break. <laughs> there we go. And you can see he's going up. And you can see as well for the patients as well, the lists. And the illnesses, the list. So well, I think we have a look at that in a few minutes. But it helps you to see, oh, we've got like... 18 people with lightheadedness. There we go. I think I'm realising now we're going to get a nurse. I've got 18 people with lightheadedness and they there's not enough general diagnosis. Hooray! Biffa's worked it out. Smell the roses. There we go. Um, I knew he was going to do that. Come in, come in. Let's diagnose you generally. And you're going to get diagnosed. Yeah, so I've got 18 people with lightheadedness. They're not getting diagnosed quick enough. We need another diagnosis room or we need another lightheadedness curing machine and things like that so it helps you to get that overall look at what's going on because there is so much going on oh he's coughing look it's like extra people in that pharmacy <laughs> are they are they a couple or are you just like looking over the shoulder you also get the option just sending people home as well if you're like you're waiting too long go home which is going to lose you money there we go Lightheadedness, diagnosed, extra happiness, 5%, and diagnosed. I could do with another doctor's office. I don't think I build one just yet, but we'll get to that. So now the lightheadedness person goes over from the GP's office to the diagnosing office. I've noticed she's unhappy, so I'm thinking, how can I make her happier? How about some pop plants? There we go. And we get the decor going up. So I'm now looking around thinking, pop plants everywhere, got to place the bushes. Make the place look nice. There we go. And try and really keep people as happy as possible. 
So now we're looking at the patients list I was talking about before. So we've got uh, their status, diagnosis, happiness, and health. So obviously you want to cure people before they die. There we go. Diagnosis certainty, 54%. So they could go through the diagnosis process again before we find out what's wrong with them. Oh, look. And we can, yeah, not feeling very well there in the toilet. Hello. Yes, please go to the farm. Sorry to be, uh, oh, you're having a popsicle or something. Chocolate bar. Good to check up on what's going on and see where you're falling down. Oh, nurse, there's coughing up a lung. Come in, I'm just dying. Henry Hoofalum. Oh, we, now we need a ward. Things have moved on. We've got bed face coming in. People sleeping at weird angles. So we've got a bit of information there. Deluxe clinic required on the left. I don't think I get to that one yet. So we can get patients to wait. We can say, send them home. So, you know, it's up to you. I think I get people to wait and we just sort of build quickly. So I'm going to skip through building the, the, the ward here. There's so much I want to show. I've sort of edited together uh, as much as I can. But when I get to actually play the game and, you know, do it, we're going to dive into all the details a bit more. If you've got any questions at all about anything you're seeing, ask me in the comments below. There we go. Got a ward built. I will try and answer everything I can. There's probably things that you're seeing that I'm not mentioning that I could reply to in the comments. So ask away i'm gonna try and you know help as much as possible so how are we getting on here so now i want some nurses for my hospital quick sip of tea while i'm looking at that so again you've got treatment speed stamina training so things that i'm now thinking i can spend better money or i can just get the cheapest person <laughs> which i do which will make things run better and as we get to bigger and better hospitals we certainly start getting into that so oh, nice cup of tea Staff promotion. So we can promote, we can say not now, we can give them more salary. You want to keep your staff happy because if you don't keep them happy, then you have to buy a whole new staff member. It could be like another $30,000. So a little, you know, a little boost in their wages here and there will keep people happy. So look at that. We've got a queue problem. Nine queue, nine people in the queue there, which is not great. So we might need to do something about that, which I don't think we're necessarily going to do right now. <laughs> I'm like, moving people around, what can we do? There's nobody at reception again. He's gone for a wander. And the little symbols above their heads tell you stuff as well. So I think that guy's got rubbish he wants to throw away. He's a little bit bored, and I guess we're going to have to deal with the problems that we've got in a future episode. And we're getting another assistant here, are we, for the desk? Yeah, we'll look at that. Nothing like a bird. So, for now, this episode, we're going to have to stop that one there. Hit the big B with the tea stain to subscribe. Ask your questions below. I will try and cover as many as possible. And be back here tomorrow for more Two Point Hospital. I think we're going to have like episodes for about a week. There's so much footage I've got to get through, so I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.